I just want to say on behalf of the Knowledge Project, Meg Honeywell over here, my uh, colleague in crime for many years and head of this amazing organism known as the Knowledge Project, bringing writing and the arts to teens and kids citywide. Um, these days, I would say Zoom-wide, we don't really know. I mean, we know where all of you are from, but we sometimes get people from other states, which is really nice. So um, everything is adaptable, but one of the things we're really interested in why I think it was so extraordinary to work with Lisa is we take what you're doing in school or all the tools that you have and all the passions and all your great talents. And um, I love that Niji said she was a triple threat. I assume all of you are at least double threats, if not more. And we say, you know, this is great stuff, but one day you're going to grow up. And if, unless you want to like get a cool job working at Starbucks, if they even exist anymore, by the time you all grow up, um, you might want to make a career and really make an impact in the world with your talent in writing and the arts, all of, all of those. And Lisa's very um, comprehensive approach to teaching writing um, will stand you in good stead. Even if you go on and become you know, a scientist or a dog walker or whatever, you will still need to know how to write why don't we just really quickly, if you want to say who you are, like what grade you're in, um, so I have an idea. I'll just, I'll go first. My name is Lisa. Uh, my career background is in magazines, but uh, I'm also a creative, creative writer, and I'm working on a book right now, a nonfiction book about my family and actually I have an unsolved murder in my family so I'm working mm. on writing about that but in my career I'm a, mostly an entertainment journalist so I cover actors and tv shows and that sort of thing um, and I'll just to give you a quick idea of what we did um, Samantha and Iago were both in class with me in the spring and we put together this whole magazine of all of their creative writing work, which was great. So this is a whole magazine full of their mm -hmm. stories, um, which was kind of what we were working toward in the class. But um, may, if there's time at the end, if you guys have questions about me, I can answer it then where we don't have a whole lot of time mm -hmm. and I have a really fun exercise for us to do. So why don't you all just uh, introduce yourself? Why don't I, um, I'll just go around from what I see on the screen and I've got, uh, and I'm probably gonna torture this name, Nyerith? Uh, <laughs> um, close, Niji, uh, you can just call me Niji. Niji, okay. <laughs> um, I'm an eighth grader and I go to PPAS. Okay, great. And let's see, Mutale? Yes, Mutale. You got it. You're one of the only people who usually gets it right. Yeah. And I'm in the ninth. I'm in the ninth grade. Okay, great to see you. And Naomi. Um, hi, I'm Naomi. I'm in the sixth grade, and I go to PPAS. Great. Mm. So I'm so glad to see you all here, Samantha and Iago. You want to just say hello, give a shout out. Hi, uh, I'm Iago. <laughs> Hi, I'm Samantha, um, and I'm in the 11th grade, and I also go to PBAS. And Iago is in 8th grade now, I guess, uh, right? I'm in 8th grade, and I go to Anderson. Okay. And mm -hmm. it looks like there's somebody else coming in. I'm not sure who that, if that's another student or not. Hi, I'm, I'm Greg, yeah. Hi. Hi, Greg. Uh, I'm Lisa. I'm teaching this class. We're just you're, we're just starting, so we just were kind of going around saying our names. So you want to okay. just introduce yourself and what grade you're in? Yeah, um, I'm Greg. I'm in 11th grade, and I'm going to PPAS. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us. I'm happy to see you all. So, like I said, we're we're kind of pressed for time, so um, I'm just going to dive right in. The uh, idea about this class 
I thought would be for us to just try and write, talk a little bit about short stories and then try and write a really quick short story. So I'm going to give you a prompt. But I know uh, Samantha and Iago have heard this before, so this will be a little bit of a repeat for you guys. But for those of you who haven't been in class with me before, I'm just wondering what, if you have an idea of what you think the most important ingredients of any story are, whether it's a short story or a novel or anything. If, you, if a story has three things. Go ahead, Niji. Beginning, middle, and end. Ding, ding, ding. Perfect. So every story is kind of obvious, but not, you know, it can, it can trip some people up. So every story has to have a beginning, a middle, or an end. That's true of whether it's fiction, nonfiction. Poetry will give a little bit of <laughs> room to, but um, those are the three key ingredients. And then once you start thinking about your beginning, middle and end, there are some other elements that you also need as well. And this is gonna hold true uh, for short stories as well as, as anything else. Are you guys familiar with the, the five W's, what we call them? Yes, no? I know. <laughs> Great, okay. Naomi, you wanna shout them out? Um, who, what, when, where, why? Yep, that's perfect. So again, this is all pretty basic. You guys are totally on it, but those are all elements that you need in any story. So you need basically characters, you need a setting, you need a situation, um, and then you need within that situation maybe a problem to solve, you need motivation for the characters. Um, and that's true, I, mostly what I write is nonfiction, but that can, that, so that can be true for nonfiction as well. So if you're writing, I don't know, a profile story of um, your favorite actor, your favorite singer, I don't know who that would be, um, you would wanna write about that person at, as if in a way they are a character. You wanna give a full presentation of who they are, where they're from, maybe what their house is like, what they like to do in their spare time, just to kind of round out any story that you're writing. So that's, tr that's both true if you're writing a, you know, Cinderella or whether you're writing about, I don't know who you guys would know, Johnny Depp or, uh, I don't know, <laughs> something about one of the uh, like Star Wars actors or something. Um, so if you've got the beginning, middle and end, and you've got the who, what, when, where and why, what is it specifically, do you think about a short, like what are some characteristics specifically of short stories? And this is just a free for all. If anybody who wants to chime in. Mutale, go ahead. A conflict. Conflict is good. Any story needs a conflict. Excellent. Um, like a cliffhanger? Cliffhanger could could have a cliffhanger. It, de it depends. Short, so short stories are sometimes they can have a full plot within them. But because they are short, and a short story can be anything from almost a paragraph long to something, generally it's something that you can read sort of in one sitting. So it's not like a novel that you have to read over a number of days. But um, it, so it's something short. And with short stories, they, they don't always have a fully developed plot. So you could put a cliffhanger in there but, and some short stories even may end on a cliffhanger, but they, they are also kind of snapshots of a particular moment in time or a particular situation. So that the, the advantage of the short story is that you don't have to think out a whole elaborate plot. You don't have, it's, it's zooming in almost like you've got 
a particular situation under a microscope. So the characters may not be fully developed, um, at, but it can be looking at one particular problem maybe that needs to be solved. And maybe you look at it from a couple of different angles within, within the story. And like I said, it still needs to include all those sort of basic elements. Another thing that's really useful in any kind of writing, right, is um, the five senses. You guys know, I mean, we can even go beyond the five senses, but you know the five what the five senses are, right? All of you guys, yep. So when you're writing, um, any kind of writing, fiction, nonfiction, again, whatever it might be, it's really helpful to draw on smells, sounds that you hear, any details, tastes, any details that you can put into your writing that uh, relate to that, enrich what you're writing and give the reader a fuller picture of what it is you're writing about. So, how do you guys feel about doing a quick writing exercise? You up for it? Okay, all right. Any questions so far? I know I'm going really quickly and I haven't gone into great depth, but I wanna get right to this. Any, any questions from anybody? No? Okay, so. Here's what I want you to do. Take a page from your notebook and number from one to 10, please. Now, by those numbers, what I would like you to do is write down 10 things that you've been thinking about lately. It could be it could be anything. It could be uh, you're thinking about dinner. It could be I had a fight with my brother and I'm trying to solve the problem of whatever that is. It could be, I don't know, race cars, spaceships, whatever you've been thinking about lately. Just write down 10 things. And then just, I guess, look up when you're done. Doesn't have to be super ornate or anything. Okay, next thing I want you to do is write down a setting. It can be related to something that you just wrote down or it could just be whatever it is. It could be Victorian England, it could be a spaceship in outer space, a van in the desert, if, inside a McDonald's, like what? just one setting, not 10, just one. And then we're gonna make another list of 10 nouns this time. So person, place, or thing, but those 10 things 
nouns that you're going to write down need to be related in some way to the setting that you just wrote down. So if you wrote down inside a spaceship, there might be, I don't know, laser guns or aliens or, I don't know, a button so that you can jump to light speed. Just write down 10 nouns and feel to, free to be as creative as you want. All right, and then when you get done with that, I want you to take a separate sheet of paper, write down again, one to 10. I don't know if you can see it, but kind of space it out because what we're gonna do is we're gonna tear it up or you can even tear it up ahead of time. I want you to have 10 pieces of paper with numbers one through 10 individually on those pieces of paper. And then jumble them all up and put them in a pile. All right. Anybody need more time? Or is everybody good? Oh, wait, so you, you said to write a, sorry, write a setting? Uh, yeah, you need a setting. Yes. Yeah. And the now the 10 nouns that you write down need to be related to that setting. So does, it, does everybody have their pile? Everybody good? Shout out if you're still struggling. No? Okay. All right. I'm still, I'm still writing the, uh, the I'm just sober for my note. Okay. All right. Give you a couple more minutes. This writing exercise is actually one that what I just finished a, a grad school program in creative writing. And this is one that one of my fellow students did and had in one of her classes. All right, every, everybody ready? 
Okay, so now what I want you to do is pick three numbers from your pile at random. Okay, so the first number, I want you to match it up to the first list. Find what it, say you're, you've got number seven. Look at number seven on that list of things you were thinking about and just circle it. The next two numbers, you guys with me so far? The next two numbers match it up to the list, match those two up to the list of nouns so that you have two nouns. I need to take it with you. All right, so now, you have a subject that you've been thinking about, you have your setting, and you have your two nouns related to that setting. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna give you 10 minutes. I know this is gonna be dead air on Zoom time, but I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to write a scene, incorporating, if you can, all three of those words and your setting. Doesn't have to be super complicated. If you can give it a beginning, middle and end, that's great. But just see how evocative you can be. Use your senses, use the setting. You can make it fiction fantastical or you can stick to whatever is true to your life. And I'm going to actually set a timer right now. So you've got 10 minutes. Ready, set, go. I'll give you guys like a five minute warning and then like a two minute warning. So just keep, keep writing as much as you can. If you want an additional challenge, see if you can incorporate even more of the nouns that were in your second list.
if you're struggling at all, you feel like you need some drama or conflict, try to incorporate this line. Then the lights went out. If that doesn't work for you, you don't have to use it. But if you, if you think you can make something of it, use it. All right, got about three and a half minutes left. Two minutes. Don't forget your senses, what you see, what you smell, what you hear.
And that's 10 minutes. Everybody good? All right, how did, how did you guys find that? Feel free to un, unmute yourself. We can, we can chat a little bit. Did you? It was, it was good. I liked it. Did you find, did you find it difficult? Did you find that ideas came to you or? I mean, with the numbers I picked, it kind of, kind of went hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So it was it was easier for me, but for overall, it was just it was kind of like it was kind of easy, but it was also like very spontaneous. Like you had to really make it up on the spot. Right, right. It gets your kind of gets your mind thinking. Anybody want to share what they wrote? I definitely want to hear. I found this. A little bit challenging because I, I had to uh, take a call in the middle and I missed two minutes of your great instructions. But um, I would love to hear even a snippet of some folks. I think Gregory went thumbs up. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I could read mine, that. Let's that go would for it. it. Michelle, go go for it, Greg. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Lying on her back, she looked up at the welcoming winter sky. The constellations reflected in her eyes as she pulled the blanket closer to her chin. The wind howled outside, pushing the house's walls inwards, but never so fierce as to cause some sort of implosion. She loved winter. The cold didn't bother her. Others found it aggressive and oftentimes ruthless. But she found some way to love it. She would always dream about the future during the winter season. Looking up at those twinkling stars, she'd dream about possibilities all the sky engulfed her thoughts. Her eyes would slowly close and fall into an abyss of imaginary lands and thoughts. And within what seemed to be seconds, her eyes fluttered open, but the stars were gone. The sky was no longer so welcoming and those dreams vanished. As her eyes focused, she realized that in fact, there was no sky, there were no stars, but that she was just staring at her ceiling and on it was flickering Christmas lights not constellations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Very, dis very descriptive. I have a feeling, Gregory, that you write a lot. Am I right? Uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really excellent example of uh, using your setting. What, tell us what your, what your three words were. Okay, so I had um, I had Christmas lights as as one of them. Mm -hmm. I had blanket, and what was what was this other one? Um, oh, cold and cold slash winter. I put. Oh. Yeah, well, you did you did a great job of really evoking a mood there too. Any anybody have? thoughts or comments on on what he did that was it was really excellent mm. anything stand out i loved your just your first line even the welcoming winter sky mm. that's uh a little bit of alliteration i don't know you guys i'm sure most of you mm -hmm. know alliteration so it was i love i love the mood that you said and that you know you it's a good example of, of a short story. Did you see how what Gregory did was really a snapshot of kind of a moment in time where he used the setting, but there was still kind of a character. There was, there were, there was a little bit of emotion in there. It, it, it was very, very well done. <laughs> and it, anybody else want to share? I see, um, I see some comments in the chat. I, I just wanted to share that it did not feel like a, an exercise with lines that you had to fill out and so on. It just felt very organic and natural. As you said, Lisa, 
Gregory had like a snapshot of a story that just it flowed mm -hmm. so well. Yeah, it was beautiful. Matali, you. you wanna you wanna share what you wrote? Yeah, I'll share. All right, I said, I'm at the beach with my mom and brother doing my assignment, which is due in two hours while I'm at the beach. It's super hard to focus when my family is having fun, everyone wearing bikinis and swim trunks, and I'm in shorts and a tank top with my book and binder in my hand. My mom and little brother are playing in the ocean while I'm under the beach umbrella sitting on the towel, applying an unnecessary amount of sunscreen, and they're sitting in my flip flops. I hate it here. <laughs> what, um, so what were your three words? Um, assignment for um, what was on my mind. Uh -huh. A beach was my setting and bikini and swim trunks were my words, but I could, I got to use more of my words because I kind of like finished others quick. Yeah. yeah, nice work. I love that line, an unnecessary amount of sunscreen. <laughs> We've all been there. That was, that was really good. You see how when you, like when you use your setting and the nouns that go with the setting, it helps to kind of broaden the feeling and the descriptiveness of what you're, of what you're writing so that we were right there kind of on the beach with you. That was, that was really great. You brought us right into that little moment. Anybody else? Lauren says she can okay. share. Here, she's put it in the chat. Oh, so. no, she was, okay. there it is, great. So Beautiful. I'll read it, but you, if you guys look in the chat, you can all also kind of read along. So we sat there waiting in the darkness with bated breath, hoping it would never find us. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> Locked in our own room, we huddled together, staying so close that our skins could have melded together to form one. The silence was my comfort as it was for everyone in the valley. Though many children feared the dark, I welcomed it. I let it envelop me in its arms. My small companion, on the other hand, can hardly think the way I can about such matters. She was my blanket during those dark nights and my light during the day. One of the few left who didn't know the true wrath of the world. Everyone was afraid of something, even me. She was the exception. While her youth did offer the safety of ignorance, the other children her age were hardly as carefree as her. And even uh, for even they understood the danger outside the door once the sun had left the sky. But my little one was never scared and that made me happy. In fact, everyone looked upon my little one with such fondness and joy that when night came, there was no need to listen to the dragon for she had given the valley what he could never understand. To her, I was the world, the very thing that held her to the earth in the same way she clutched her, own, her worn down rabbit. That's what, that's what we're where to the, that's what, we're we were. To the dragon. <laughs> that's that's what we, oh, that's what we were to the dragon, rabbits meager prey running from a hung, hungry predator. Every day we would burrow back into our rooms, welcoming the darkness and praying that the dragon who stalked us in the light would pass over our valley. Wow, dark, <laughs> very moody. Mm. Very COVID. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, Ominous. So Lauren, if you can, if you can put in the chat what your um, what your words were that you used. COVID dark uh, family. Yep. <laughs> we got that, very COVID. Yeah, and that really comes through. And your your setting. Just, I mean, it's, it's again, yeah, nature. Okay, valley. Yeah, I, I love these because it's, yeah, because it's so um, really 
dig down deep into the mood of it too. This too, all of them have been have had different different moods, but the more descriptive that you that you can be, the more um, evocative and the more it draws the reader in. Mm. So it, it's really good. Did you all, anybody um, struggle with trying to kind of think of a plot or think of, or uh, anything like that? Or were you just kind of trying, trying to be as descriptive as you could? Yago wrote, yeah. <laughs> uh, you had some trouble. Do you, want, do you want to share what you wrote, Iago, or no? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody else? Nope. Gonna stay still. Okay. Um, so I don't have a whole lot, uh, a whole lot more um, writing wise for you guys to do. We can talk a little bit more about um, just storytelling are you, I'm kind of interested in what you guys are interested in like what do you like to read and for those of that you that do write like Gregory uh, it, it seems like a, a lot of you have have written before what kind of things do you actually like to write in your like for yourselves in your own time yeah um, on, on occasion, I'll write, um, like a sports themed article for this like online blog. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's almost like, uh, well, not just almost like that's journalism really. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you write fiction at all too or no? Um, I don't know, not really. I, I kind of like writing more uh, nonfiction or if it's not like sports, sports theme, something like with economics, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Neither of which are my <laughs> area of expertise. What about um, Mitale, uh, Naomi, any, any of you? Um, what do you have um, favorite like books that you read, it just, it gives me kind of a greater sense of, of what kind of your interests are too. Yeah. Naomi, go ahead. I wanted to say something about what I wrote. Okay, um, yeah. I like, I got very random different ideas and it kind of just jumbled together. <laughs> okay. Like. That Stuff. Like what? You tell them what Weird is. stuff. Yeah. Tell them. Mm -hmm. You can tell them. Yeah, you know, my word yeah. stuff is good stuff. Yeah. I'll I'll tell you. Um, and then and Gia, I'll I'll, I'll get to you in in just a second because I saw your hand was up. But, um, you know, some of the exercises that we did in my class last semester, and that's a really good thing to do, is called free writing where you don't have a specific sort of topic or destination. You're just letting your thoughts go and they do get kind of jumbled up sometimes. And you might be surprised what actually comes out of what you're writing when you're doing that. It's a good exercise. It's almost like a meditation exercise to do. If you sit down for just 10 minutes and let your, you don't pick your pen up, just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. You, even if all you're saying is keep writing, keep writing, eventually you might get to something that uh, really hits like on an idea or something you're thinking about. So when, you know, when you're, when you're doing creative writing, at least at this stage, you don't really even need to wor worry if things are coming out kind of jumbled because that's in some ways that's the fun of it you see where it goes. And sometimes it'll surprise you. So don't worry about it, Naomi. I'm, I'm sure it's yeah, great. But do you have a sentence you wanna share with us? Just one? Mm -hmm. 
maybe not. We'll come. We'll come back to you. And and Jeet, you said what what kind of stuff do you like to read or that do you write on your own time? Mm hmm. Sorry. Um. I don't really write. I'd like to read though, <coughs> and then journal about it. Kind of journal for my whole life, okay. but um, I really like mystery and like fantasy. Just okay. kind of imagining like their point of view on like their story. Oh yeah, and you know if you're journaling, you are writing. If you're, I mean, a lot of a lot of writers are. I am not a particularly good journal keeper. Sorry, my cat is driving me crazy. I'm not a very good journal keeper, but a lot of writers are very dedicated about writing writing in journals and keeping their thoughts and their emotions, even if they just use it for themselves. And especially now, it's a great practice to be in. So that's great. Samantha, did I see your hand go up? Um, yeah, I was just going to say that um, I tend to read like a lot of realistic fiction, um, but I remember when I was taking this class in the spring with you, we did a lot of creative writing, like you said. Um, and I also like wrote a lot of realistic fiction, but also some of it went into poetry as well. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So there's, uh, I mean, you guys know this, I'm sure there's all kinds of different ways to come at writing and and sometimes it's fun to experiment and just see sort of which genre speaks to you most or what what you have the most fun with whether it's fiction whether it's nonfiction, whether it's poetry um lauren in my class uh last semester also wrote a lot of poetry um i think the one way that writing across all different genres and forms is the same as it all, you know, you use your senses, you use description, you use um, really kind of your emotions and uh, impact the reader by putting all that down on paper. And especially now we found, we were in the middle of our class last semester when, when the pandemic hit and I think writing uh, about what we were all going through became a really sort of helpful exercise. And it can also just be fun because you can write about fantasy, spaceships, the future, the past, whatever it would be. I am, Gregory, I'm a journalist by trade. So my training is mostly in sort of interviews and research and writing and writing off of sort of real life stuff. But um, as Samantha pointed out, there, there's a new genre, not new genre, but it's talked about a lot recently called auto fiction, which I know Iago was kind of interested in uh, when we were talking about it in class that that's, it's fiction, but a lot of uh, authors will draw from their own lives. So they may write a novel, even though it's almost like a novelized version of their own life. So a lot of it is actually true, but the fiction form gives them a little bit more freedom to explore or go down different alleyways and and have some more kind of fun with it in a way. So, Lisa, I just yeah. wanted to say one thing, not, not quite off of that, but something I think Naomi said. Um, for those of you who <laughs> aren't sure how much you love to write or not what to write, or you're thinking about all the things Lisa mentioned. Um, I happen to have been speaking to a number of writers for kids and teens this weekend, as well as editors, and they are looking for smart, literate, good young writers to read manuscripts that are being sent in because they really want to hear what kids think today. So, I don't have exact information about it, but if that's something, if you would be excited to read some grown-ups manuscript and write comments about it, it's called Better Reading, B-E-T-A. I can get that information to Lisa or Meg. So it's something in your spare time you might find interesting to do. You never know. 
And to, to your point about the auto writing, is that something that's you feel this group could do in your class? Is that something that is of any interest to people? Yeah, well, what, like what we do, so my class that I taught last spring and that if I am teaching it hopefully again in January, February, we called it writing from experience. Yeah. So I don't, I don't ever want to pin anybody down, especially when they're just starting to explore writing to mm -hmm. say you only can write nonfiction. So we like, you can write really whatever you want, but one uh, writing from your own experience, you can, fiction mm. writers draw from their own experience all the time and not just even auto fiction writers. Sure. I mean, that's, that's where we get all of our material is what we live through, right? So it's just part of a writing class, what you learn, it's a, it's a little bit nuts and, nuts and bolts, but you learn sort of the structure and how to put a story together so that if you have all these ideas, whether it's nonfiction, whether it's fiction, um, no matter how real or fantastical it is, you need a kind of structure to hang it on, like a, a hat rack or something, you know, some, some kind of way to make it make sense. And once you kind of learn the, you know, inciting incident, it, elevating the action, getting to the climax, getting to the denouement, you can, you can, once you get those bones, you can really write almost anything, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, or anything. And, and when you're in school and starting to think about applying to colleges and all that kind of stuff, those lessons are just immensely helpful because mm -hmm. uh, it, readers, re readers respond to it for sure. And it'll help you in writing essays. I use all this, all this stuff, creative writing information and creative writing nuts and bolts and tools, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's, whether it's a piece of journalism or where, whether I'm working on my book. So uh, it definitely comes, comes in handy. But I mean, we're just about out of time. Do you guys have any questions about writing or about what you're doing or really about anything mm -hmm. about this exercise we just did um so you said that your background right is in um or you were trained but about like from journalism so um could you just like briefly explain what like a communications or like journalism major would would be like in uh, in college? Sure. Yeah, I I was actually I was an English major, so I wasn't a journalism major. Um, but I uh, I my first job out of college, my first internship in college was at a at a magazine. So, but if if you were going to be a communications major or a journalism major, the two are I don't the to my mind, they're different. I'm not sure how colleges structure them now. Communications is really going to be kind of publicity and marketing and PR so that they you might go into communications. Sometimes communications will go into like broadcast journalism. It really it really depends on what your what your interest is. But communications can run the gamut from uh, you know writing, press releases or uh, learning how to kind of market, I don't know, commodities, what, whatever it might be to, to um, like I said, broadcast journalism and that kind of thing. So it really depends on what, what your interest is. Jo a journalism degree, they're gonna, they're gonna instruct you in a lot of the basic tenets of writing, like, like we're doing here, you're, you're gonna learn interview techniques, probably have to do a lot of practice interviewing um, and sort of journalism best practices, how to pitch a story, how to build up your contacts, how to treat sources, 
Um, I know obviously a lot more about the journalism side of things than I do about the, the communication side of things. I don't know, um, Meg, do you have anything to add about communications or anything? Well, with, um, all right. Uh, I mean, I also started as a journalist as in radio and uh, writing uh, in another country. So I, I think the ethics are also something that you learn in journalism. And that's a very key thing, especially these days. It's mm -hmm. being uh, spoken about quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of communications, I, my track went from that to producing to producing and producing productions of live productions. And from that, I did my first films. Mm -hmm. So my films, uh, I actually learned it by doing. Somebody gave me a job to do it. I never went to the school for filmmaking. Somebody, I was producing a series of concerts and somebody said, oh my gosh, I have a back problem as a dancer and I need somebody to help me put together these films. So they ended, I produced four films and they won awards and I was a very lucky person. Then went on to do features. Yeah. So it's always about the people you're making connections with. Mm -hmm. Don't feel that it's, uh, what you get are some really good brass tacks type of things and relationships, but <laughs> when you go to college, mm -hmm. if you do it in college, like USC or NYU, if you do take those courses, um, it, you form a group, an entity, but you're doing this already at PPAS. Mm -hmm. You are form forming groups of you that are producing things already. Yeah, I will, so. I, will, I will say just whether you go into communications or journalism or whatever it might be, the, the basics of like writing is kind of at the core of all of it. Yep. No matter, no, and it doesn't, if you're gonna be a lawyer, if you're gonna be a, you know, engineer, doctor, wh whoever it is, the more, the better that you can get your thoughts and ideas across on paper or through emails or whatever it is, the written word is going to be really important going, like going forward. So whether you, you know, you need to, to decide if you're looking at colleges, kind of what, what your interest really is. And, and I would say college is also a great time to experiment. To Meg's point, getting hands-on experience. If you're interested in journalism, trying to get it, uh, internships or um, definitely making contacts and, and networking a little bit. But I learned also on the job. My first job was in LA. I moved out after college and my first real job was at a little magazine at the screen, like the screenwriting union out there. And I just, I was the assistant, but as the assistant, I got to do a little of everything. And within five years, I was running the whole magazine. So that was my journalism school more than, you know, in, as an English major, I read books and wrote papers, <laughs> and, but that gave me the skills to be able to go into journalism then. So you have to just kind of think about what, what your interests really are.